Hello, welcome to the advanced calculus mini lecture on how to model multivariable functions from real world examples and how to use such functions for optimization. We will illustrate the topic with open box examples. Open or closed boxes and cans are maybe the simplest examples. Hundreds of these boxes and cans and variations of questions like this populate calculus textbooks. The version we are considering here goes as follows. An open box should be constructed. The cost for the bottom is $5 per square meter. The cost for the green left and right side is $3 per square meter. The cost for the blue front and back side is $2 per square meter. And there is also a restriction. You have to use $20 for the whole box. Of course, finding the dimensions of such an open box Obeying the requirement is not too difficult, but in calculus the real tasks are the following. First, express the volume of the box in terms of the dimensions of the base. And second, find the dimensions of such a box that maximize the volume. We need to label the dimensions, let x be the width, y the depth, and c be the height of such a box. Now let's review the single variable calculus 1 case first. Here we have an additional restriction, for instance, of a square base, meaning x must be equal to y. We want to express the volume of the open box in terms of the length x of the square base. The variable we want to express, which is also the quantity we want to minimize or maximize later, we call the target variable. Its present value is displayed on a display the single variable by which we want to express a target variable we call the choice variable. We change it using a slider control. Playing with a slider control is really all we can do, but indirectly this will also influence our target variable, which we intently watch on the display. What we need to find out is how our changes of the choice variable influence the target variable on the display. This is a function we want to find in the first step. Other than the choice and target variable, there may be also other variables. In our case, we have choice variable x, the length of the square base, the target variable v, the volume of the box, and the other variable c, the height of the box. The variables are related by some equations. The first one is a well-known volume formula for boxes, v equals x squared times c. Since we know that the total cost of the box is the sum of the cost 5x squared for the square base and the cost 3 times 2 times x times c for the left and right sides and the cost 2 times 2 times x times c for the front and back side. And since we know that this total cost should be equal to 20, we get 20 equals 5x squared plus 3 times 2 times x times c plus 2 times 2 times x plus times c equals 5x squared plus 10 times x times c. That's it. We have three variables, but only two equations. This differs from algebra word problems, where usually the number of equations equals the number of variables. But for calculus, having fewer equations is typical. Since we want to express target variable only in terms of choice variable, we have to get rid of the other variable. In our example, we solve the second equation for c and get c equals 20 minus 4x squared over 10x, which is equal to 4 minus x squared over 2x. Then we substitute the c in the first equation by this expression and get v of x equals x squared times 4 minus x squared over 2x which is equal to 2x minus 1 half x cubed. Finding the global maximum of this function is not too difficult and actually quite funny since the solution is that x, y and c must all have the same length, so we get a cubic solution. But let's rather not do this and rather move to the multivariable calculus setting now. In multivariable calculus, we drop the square base requirement Instead of one choice variable, we now have two of them, with x 
And that's why. We have two slider controls in our more advanced cockpit. When we decide about these values, the height C of the box is determined by the cost restriction. The target variable is still the volume and we have the other variable C. What about the equations? The volume of a box is still V equals X times Y times C. And then there is a cost equation. Again, the base rectangle has dimensions x and y, an area of x, y, and the cost of 5 times x times y. The left and right side both have dimensions y and c. Therefore, the total area of these two sides is 2 times y times c, and the total cost is 3 times 2 times y times c, which is 6 times y times c. Finally, the front and back sides both have dimensions x and c. Therefore, the total area of these two sides equals 2 times x times c, and the total cost equals 2 times 2 times x times c, which is equal to 4 times x times c. Therefore, the total cost of such an open box equals 5xy plus 6yc plus 4xc. And we know that this should be equal to 20. Thus, our second equation is 5xy plus 6yc plus 4xc equals 20. Note that we have now four variables and only two equations. The gap between number of variables and number of equations is two, since we have now two choice variables. Again, the other variable, c, we don't want to use. This variable has to go. We use the equation 5xy plus 6yc plus 4xc equals 20 to eliminate c. We solve this for c and get first 6yc plus 4xc equals 20 minus 5xc, xy, or open parenthesis 6y plus 4x, close it, times c equals 20 minus 5xy, or c equals 20 minus 5xy divided by 6y plus 4x. Then we plug this into the volume equation and get v equals xy, times 20 minus 5xy divided by 6y plus 4x. And our first task, to express the volume, the target variable, in terms of the dimensions x and y of its base, the choice variables, is done. Let us now graph this function. Here are the level curves of the function for x and y between 0 and 2. Notice that initially function, the function increases for increasing x and y, but only up to a point. For instance, at x equals y equals 2, in the upper right corner of the square, the value is already back to zero, since it takes all your $20 to build even the 2 times 2 base of your box, for $5 per square meter. So the height and also the volume of this constructed box must be equal to zero. It is visible from the graph that the function achieves its highest value around x equals 1.4 maybe and y about uh, 1. In the second part of this mini lecture we will see how to find the absolute maximum of this multivariable function precisely, but let's now rather discuss another approach. The multivariable case with constraint. Why shouldn't all three dimensions x, y and c be choice variables? Of course, we cannot choose all three of them independently. We may have three slider controls in our cockpit, but still only two hands. If we work on two of them, magically the third one is moved by this. Still, a formulation like this, with a function of the target variable in terms of the choice variables, and one or more additional constraints between the choice variables, is also possible and very well suited for constraint optimization using Lagrange multipliers. Thus our task here is to maximize v of x and y and c, which is x times y times c, given the constraint 5xy plus 6yc plus 4xc equals 20. Among all points x, y and c in three-dimensional space, we can select those obeying the equation. The surface of the restriction is shown in the graph here, together with one level surface of the volume function 
v of x and y and c equals x times y times c we want to optimize. We look only at positive values of x, y and c between 0 and 2. The two surfaces touch and sit close together like different layers of an onion. The volume level surface is marked by the red line. Note that this is totally symmetric in x, y and c. In contrast to this, the restriction surface is not symmetric. The behavior in the three corners of the cube which it approaches is quite different. Look here and here and here. All right, that's it so far. Please study absolute optimization and also constraint optimization using Lagrange multipliers. And if you have done so, you are welcome to return to the second part of this mini lecture to discuss how our concrete example is solved.